What is up guys? Welcome back to another low level learning tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to be talking about pointer arithmetic as it applies to the C programming language. When people learn C, typically the hardest part about learning C is understanding how pointers work first. And then second, when you get into pointers, how to use them in a practical way. And the practicality of pointers comes from what's called pointer arithmetic, right? So as you're taking a single pointer that you create, and you're manipulating it to do something, how do you make it useful for your program? And how do you make it make sense for yourself? So we're gonna use an example here where typically pointers are used to point to items that are bigger than an integer type because you can't pass those around in function calls. You need to use pointers to address them. So we're gonna create a structure, struct, excuse me, called person. And you know, a struct is just a structure in C that has multiple attributes of basic variable types. And then the struct person can have multiple attributes. So we'll do struct person has a name and it's got 64 bytes. And then maybe person also has an age, okay? So now we have this structure. And then in theory, the size of this structure should only be 64 plus size of int, so 68 bytes if it's properly packed. There are some times where the C at compiler will insert arbitrary room in there where you don't actually get exactly 68 bytes, maybe like 70 or 72. But just generally speaking, this is about a 68 byte long structure. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to make an array of those structures in our stack for main, and we're gonna use that structure for our example here. So the way you make an array of structures in C, if you don't already know, is you say the type that you're going to make and then you give it a name. So struct person, it's going to be called people. We're gonna have 100 people. So people 100, this will make an array of persons on the stack in our main function. Now, if we wanted to edit this, if we wanted to go through and either clear the, the memory of or, or assign a value to all these people, we would have to make a pointer to act as a cursor as we walk across the array, right? So to make a pointer into a structure, we need to say struct person, which is the type that we're pointing to, and then a star, and then we're gonna say p person. And what is it equal to? It's equal to the address of people. Okay, so what did I say here? This is a person structure pointer. Its name is p person, and it points to the address of people. So now at the end of this line getting executed, P person points to the first person in people. I know we're getting pretty crazy with our English here, but it's gonna, it's gonna make sense, I promise. This points to the base right here. So now, if I wanted to iterate over this list and I wanted to do something to every single person on the list, I would have to do a for loop, right? So int i equals zero, for i equals zero, i less than 100, which is the number of people that we have in this list. We're gonna i plus plus. Pretty straightforward. So now, here's the problem that people typically get into. So we're gonna do our first assignment. We're gonna say that uh, p person age equals zero. So all I'm doing here is I'm setting their age to zero. I'm, I'm clearing the list and we can do the same thing for name, but we're not gonna do that. So the question is, how do we make p person, right? Our pointer to a person point to the next person, right? Typically people get very caught up in this and they don't understand the math. Because what, what is a pointer? A pointer is just an integer value that has an address in it, right? It points to a location. So people would sometimes say, okay, if this is an address, I need to increase it by the size of the element to make the next address the next base. So some people will typically do this, p person plus equals size of struct person, which should be about 68. Okay, so this is actually incredibly wrong and will give you crazy bugs. Here is why, okay? The C compiler is aware that you are talking about a struct person already. So what it does is it actually multiplies the number that you plus by the size of struct person. So this actually increases it by size of struct person times size of struct person. So what I actually have going on here is we can use our make file. Ah, uh, that's wrong. Oh, actually that's correct, it does crash. So this is going to cause it to crash almost instantly. I have our make file creating our program here, and then I'm actually gonna object dump and pull out the assembly and show you guys what's going on. So we're gonna full screen this, we're gonna go to our main function. Okay, so I know there's a lot going on here, but 
what you need to see is this part here, right? For some of you guys, this may be a lot of assembly. I know our channel is fairly assembly focused. So for those of you that get it, congratulations. If you don't, not a big deal. We're gonna walk through here and kind of show you guys how it's working. So we are in our for loop at this location. This is where we set I equal to zero. We then jump into our for loop at C4. At C4, we compare that I value to hex 63 or 100. If it's less than or equal to it, we go to A4. And then in A4, we add the offset into our array, into RIX, and then we set age equal to zero, right? So that's this happening right here. But remember, this at this point is supposed to be after we've set the age to zero, we want to increase our pointer by the size of a struct person. But what it's actually doing is increasing it by the size of the struct person multiplied by the size of the struct person because it knows we're already dealing with people. So the actual right answer, the way that we have to index into this array is simply by doing p person plus equals one. I know that looks wild. I know that looks like it shouldn't work at all. It's like, well, low level learning, isn't that just gonna make this point into like the 63rd character name or whatever? Nope, the C compiler is actually doing you an absolutely huge favor and it knows, hey man, we're cool. I know you're dealing with people. I know that when you say plus one, you wanna go to the next one and not, you know, the next byte in the array. So we can actually make that real quick. Note that it doesn't crash this time. And then we're actually going to go in and we're gonna object dump that value and we're gonna to go to main. We're gonna find our loop here. So here's us setting I equal to zero. We're gonna jump down to AC. Um, excuse me, no, we're gonna jump down to C1. C1 here, compare it to 63. If not, go to A4. A4, boom, boom. Okay, now we're gonna add hex 44. Guys, what is hex 44? Well, let's ask Python. 68, wow. Did I not say that 68 was the exact size of struct person? It all comes together. So what we can do here now is keep going with our list and we can do things like p person uh, name of zero equals zero. That will null terminate the value so that we don't get any output from it. We can do a whole bunch of cool stuff like that. So guys, I hope that this video did a little bit for you. It showed you kind of why pointer arithmetic comes off as so complicated, but at the end of the day, it's really not that hard. It's just the compiler is already aware of what you're talking about. Let it do the work for you. We can jump over every other person. We can go to every third person or every fourth person because the, the compiler is already aware of what you're talking about when you're doing pointer arithmetic. Guys, if you like this video, if you learned something or if I made your life a little bit easier, do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Still crashed, not sure why. Take care. Goodbye.